At the outset, I would like to thank Professor Atul Kumar uh, for giving me this opportunity to be part of this uh, course, uh, which we can guess uh, how popular it is uh, when this uh, hall is almost uh, full here today. So I'm going to talk about something which is uh, very commonly encountered by all of us, and uh, it's a challenge the center involving uh, DME, uh, real life situations, so I would be just uh, showing some cases and also uh, the approach which we have for, uh, it's not moving. Okay. Okay, so uh, we all know that diabetic macular edema is the commonest cause of moderate visual loss and all of us we face the challenge and it's OCT which has uh, now reclassified DME and most of us are using the term now non-center involving and center involving DME rather than the older classification where we had uh, so many of those uh, uh, with us based mainly on the flood dispersion and geography. So non-center involving is like this where you, you have a normal four wheel contour and the center is not showing any changes, but the challenge is posed by a center involving DME, which uh, as is shown here, would show so many things and thickening of macula right in the center, although clinically you may not see that much, but uh, so what do you do when you see a center involving DME or any DME? The first thing is must work up such a case. That is the bottom line, don't do anything. Don't do those red things straight away. You can wait for that. So do their blood glucose level, blood pressure, lipid profile, hemoglobin, also their glycosylated hemoglobin, 24-hour uh, urine protein or microalbuminuria, blood urea serum creatine is optional or maybe some cases are advanced because this is parenchymal damage which, and then subsequently perhaps you can do what we all do. And why you want to do this? You want to achieve excellent glycemic control for all of them, normalize their blood pressure, that's very, very important. And the reduction of serum lipids is very, very important in our, most of them are dyslipidemic. Treat anemia, we have even seen reversal of uh, diabetic retinopathy by just treating anemia. And proteinuria, which is very difficult, you have good drugs, you can reduce it, you can't cure it. Of course, you would subsequently give anti-VEGF, uh, steroids, or do focal grade laser. Some cases may require uh, surgery, and many cases still may need a sort of a combined therapy. This is one, I think, case you must have seen. Uh, this is from our center, uh, which is published, uh, and this changed the whole scenario as far as the lipid lowering and a metabolic control is concerned. You have count finger vision. Just with metabolic control, it became 660 and uh, during the anti-lipid drugs. And subsequently, you can see the same case with laser and follow-up and good control is 612. So that is what you would like to see your patient to be in cases of diabetic macular edema. We did another study which was published in Diabetic Care. We had seen, we were all following ETDRS. Only 3% patients improved vision. Whereas when we did this kind of approach where metabolic control was done before and then subjected to laser, 30% improved vision. So this, this is almost closer to what we uh, these days get also with anti-VEGF treatment. So I'm just showing you some of these. You can see there the dates. That is the time we advocated this kind of therapy all throughout the country. You can see this is three months time. If you inject anything, do anything, nothing is going to make it better. But it definitely, you can see those hard exudate melted away just with metabolic control. And the leakage you see in the late frame is much less. This is another a case, six months down the line. Again, everything you can achieve if you achieve a very good metabolic control doing all those things which I mentioned earlier. What about anti-VEGF? I am not even projecting the whole thing. All of you are very, very uh, conversant with it. What the Cochrane Review says, this is a recent one which is published, that anti-VEGFs are effective in improving vision in DME with three to four in every 10 people. And they would experience anywhere from three or more lines over one year. So that is what perhaps you are looking at, gaining with the anti-VEGF. 
And most often, these cases are undertreated and under-monitored. Why? They are not the same. Many of them have MI, strokes, and some of them will get during the time you are treating them. I'm sure many of you have experienced those who give them frequently. Overall, the safety between the three antigenic, all the three, Avastin, Lucentis, and Ilia, is the same. So that, that part is very clear. I am just demonstrating one case here where you can see everything is wrong with this patient. He's 58 years, underwent metabolic control, somewhat the thickening started going down. Then we gave three Avastin injections and also did great laser. You can see how well he has responded. So you need to tackle them. They do come back and uh, uh, will have all those uh, changes. So anti-VEGFs, definitely, they have a role. So I'm not going into details. And you're going to uh, do uh, these things many a times in, in a combination fashion. And corticosteroids, they are essential adjunct for the treatment of refractory and persistent edema. And you, its efficacy is similar in pseudophagicides. You can be very confident using the same way as you use anti-VEGF. And as an adjunct during cataract surgery or post-cataract surgery, and, but the problem is cataract and raised pressure, those are additional. One refractory case, which had undergone so many treatments, you can see that grid there, how heavy, so many times done. Anti-VEGFs also with Ozudex, it responded very well in front of you. Cataract surgery. During cataract surgery, you give in such a case where it has transylonal real has been given, laser has been done, so many things have been done. And this was published in ophthalmology from our group from PGI. And this is now something which many people would like to do, that you give even on the table Ozudex and do a cataract surgery simultaneously. I would like to show you a case. Chronic DME is the biggest problem for us but we don't have this drug, Ilovian, which was given where, uh, in this case, because this was a, we had a trial. We enrolled the maximum number of cases in the world for this trial. And uh, so you can see here, after Ilovian, everything is cured in a chronic case. So we don't have a drug like that, but it has been improved in more than 20 countries in Europe, also in US, for chronic DME. So we really wish that we get this drug. So what about DME surgery? This is beneficial for functional and anatomical outcome in tractional DME, and we all uh, are very well aware of that. However, the routine ILM peeling in tractional DME is still a controversial subject because some of them may develop certain problems like thinning and other things. So, so I'd just like to share again a case here. This is, uh, uh, this is more of a case based. 72 years of woman in 2009 underwent grid laser also was given five Avastin injection. She was somehow always reluctant for surgery. And, but she had all along a tractional DME. You can see almost like a globally adherent kind of a membrane. Finally, she did agree. And you can see this is after the surgery in October 2005. The, that has been removed. And you will see subsequently, she improved 612. You can see those uh, on autofluorescence, those uh, laser scars from earlier, and the contour came to normal. So despite so many grid lasers done earlier, focal laser done, then so many injections given, such a case is not going to respond. So you have to uh, take for surgery. Well, friends, as far as the diabetic macular edema is concerned, it's a very difficult ball game for us in this country. We face every day. We get a lot of poor patients, a lot of patients, those who even, the, I would say middle class patient can't afford those kind of treatments if we want to give that many. And the insurance coverage and government, government support is also limited. The treatment varies according to the cost involved, affordability and diverse Indian scenario. So we still have to sometimes subject these patients to the same treatment which we were doing much earlier. Or we might have to do more of, we may give say three Avastin or something and then do laser, maybe they cut down on treatment, and of course do a better control, everything. So standard of care need to be followed with some riders, despite whatever you may say, and then you have other issues, you may need low dose steroids sometime in these cases, and do laser uh, on them. So often diabetic macular edema patients are under-treated and under-monitored. So I would like to conclude my talk that you require a comprehensive control of blood sugar, BP, 
proteinuria, anemia, and lipids. And I have shown you some examples, very convincing. Anti-VEGF steroids alone or in combined with laser is preferred than laser alone and diffuse involved because with the laser added later on, you would definitely induce at least the number of injections. And the laser is required for center involved DME along with anti-VEGF uh, steroids mainly from this purpose. And the, most of the results are similar in the vitreous surgery for a fractional DME. Thank you very much, friends.